Today I want to show you something that's been available in Unity and C-sharp for quite a while, but I just realized that a lot of people don't know about it and don't know how to use it. And if you're doing anything that has a UI, some sort of an interface that updates with things that get added and removed, then you definitely want to know how to use this thing and not recreate it from scratch. It's before we look at the code, I wanna show you what it looks like in a real world example, and then we'll talk about how you actually write the code for it, which is actually like one liner, it's extremely easy. So here you can see I've got a UI element or a panel here that shows me three different droids that I can buy. I've got two of the same one and one different one. The prices are off, I've actually cut them down to 100, but if I click buy on one, you see that the one that I bought disappears and a new one appears. The same should happen if I click on one of these, a new bot will appear and I can keep clicking until I run out of money and keep buying all of these bots. And my UI will just automatically kind of magically update. Well, at least it seems magic and it will once we get into the code. So let's take a look at how the code is updating and how it's showing these UI elements. Before I open that though, I did want to make one quick announcement and a quick reminder that the Ultimate Game Dev Bundle is just about over. I think there are two days left and we're just about out of seats. So if you're interested in game development, want to learn all of the basics, the fundamentals to advanced stuff, and learn how to publish and promote your game, get it out on Steam and in front of other people, then make sure that you check it out by clicking the link in the description. To see how this works and see where the magic is, we're going to open up the droid panel. This is my script that's attached to the panel that shows the droids that are available. Although I did kind of pop in some aliens there, so it's a little bit confusing. Here's our droid panel. The droid panel is just a regular old script with a root and a prefab so that I can define where the entries are gonna go. That's the root and the prefab is what the entries will look like. And those are a droid entry. I'll click through to it real quick so you can see it, but it's nothing special. It has some fields for the different UI elements and then a method to bind that sets the data in all of those, sets the sprite, sets the text for the tier and the name and all that stuff. Let's go back now. So if we look at the droid panel again, you see that we've also got an observable list of available droids. And this is what we're gonna be talking talking about today, the observable list class. It's very much like a list that you'll see here on line 12, except it's got a little bit of extra coolness. Below that, we have on line 12, a list of droid UI entries. So these are the entries that we're seeing on the screen, the three that are visible at the time. Well, right, it could hold more, but we're only ever letting it get to three. Then we've got the start method. Start method's pretty simple, but this is where the coolness and the magic really happens. So we have a remove existing droid UI entries. This just cleans up any stuff that I've got in there, test stuff, any existing entries that were already there, goes through and makes sure that they're all removed. Then we get the available droids from our droid manager, which just returns back this observable list, which is a list that's going to allow us to register right here on lines 19 and 20 for events whenever an item is added or removed to this list. So it's essentially exactly like a list in C Sharp, a regular old list that you would use, except you get these two nice events for when an item is added and removed. And you see that this comes in handy because then if I write code that's modifying these these lists, I don't have to remember to also call whatever event I've set up to custom and uh, update the UI elements as well. So what we're doing here is creating a droid entry. So we use a little lambda statement because I only care about the item that's being added. I don't care about the collection, the sender right here, and I don't need anything else from args, just the one item. So we use a lambda statement to register for the event with the plus equals, and then here we put in our two parameters that we get from item added, the sender and the event args, and then we call into create droid entry and just pass in our item. If I go into that create droid entry, very simple. It just instantiates an entry, binds it up, which you saw just a moment again ago. You could rewind if you wanna see that code again. And then we've got the droid UI entries and we just add it onto there. So that way I can remove it later. When we remove an item, we get the item removed entry or item removed called calls our remove droid entry, which just finds that UI entry by the droid instance, the one that we've bound it to right here, and then deletes it and removes it from our UI. Nice and simple, and this gets even simpler once you dive into the new UI toolkit stuff. But for now, I'm just keeping it on on the old things, and it works really well. So how does this get added or this uh this available droids, item added and item removed get called. Let's go take a look at it. First, let's find the source of our available droids. This is an observable list. We're actually assigning it to this observable list, which is just another observable list. It's actually the same observable list. We're just getting a reference to it in the other class. 
So this available droids list gets modified whenever we spawn droids. So whenever we create new droids, when they're less than three, we will add a droid to the droid count right here or the droid list. And then that's going to fire off that item added and then update our UI element. When somebody buys a droid from our droid manager, it's going to remove the droid from this list of droids, which then the UI elements already know to go update themselves. They don't have to, this thing doesn't have to know about the UI just has to have that one reference to that collection that's getting updated. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now there, of course, you can just write this yourself. You could have a method in here that has an, ad, or in the add method, we could fire off an event in the droid manager and perhaps um, register for that. But we could do that for, I guess, I guess the point is you can really write this yourself, but the difference is that if you don't use the observable collection and you write all of these things yourself, when you run into the case where you've added to that list, but um, forgot to fire off your own custom event that you wrote, then you'll well, spend a while debugging it, which is exactly what, what happened to me before. And then I was like, oh yeah, why don't I just switch to using observable lists and that will solve the problem. And I thought, hey, why not just talk about this to everybody else? So I hope that this was somewhat helpful that these uh, may be something useful and new. If this is useful though and helped at all, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, share, and just let me know. If you prefer some other type of videos, then hey, drop a comment down below and, and let me know that as well. Also, don't forget to check out that Ultimate Game Dev Bundle. It's just about over and I will see you in the next video. Bye.